Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have six all new Shore Living DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree. For the first DIY, we're going to use one of these. Dollar Tree calls it a sunburst. It kind of looks a little bit like a mushroom coral. It's really pretty though. It comes in all different colors. I don't need a hanger on it because I'm going to make mine into a candle holder. So I'm just going to try to take the hanger off without causing too much damage back here. I love the color of this one. It comes in a couple different colors of blue, silver, and gold, I believe. And I like this color. I want my candlestick to be this color. So this one is going to be perfect. So not too much damage. And then this is the candlestick that I'm going to use. These are new at Dollar Tree. I found mine with like the Mother's Day stuff, like in a little special section. And they had them in a couple different sizes. So I have some spray paint that's sea glass. And it is almost the same exact shade of blue that that shell is. So I'm just going to go ahead and spray paint the gold candlestick so it will match and kind of blend into that fun little sunburst wall hanging. I've got a whole bunch of those and I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. Um, but this actually worked pretty well. So I'm just going to do um, a quick paint job on this. It didn't take too much to turn that gold into blue. Just trying to make sure that I got everything covered on that. And I'm also going to kind of spray paint the back of that where I caused a little damage when I removed the hanger. Easy peasy. Now I have to figure out a way to put this all together. You know, um, metal projects are often really hard to glue together. So I'll show you what I came up with to get it to stay together. Hopefully it will be secure. Hot glue and metal doesn't always play nicely together. So I wanted to try something else. So I need something to put in the candlestick. And so I thought one of these little tiny wood cubes from the Dollar Tree would work well. And so the first thing I'm going to do is attach it to my shell with some E6000. And so I will have to let this part dry on its own to make that nice and sturdy. Now the wood cube itself though, I'm going to try to glue in the candlestick holder, if that makes sense. So I kind of just need to fill up the well of my candlestick here um, with some hot glue. And then I'm just going to put the wood cube down inside hoping and that secures everything and it seems like it did. Isn't that a really pretty piece? I think it looks really coastal and I thought that the leaves on the candlestick that I chose would kind of look a little bit like seaweed. Now for the candle, um, this is the Shore Living candle and I don't know, I got this the other day at Dollar Tree but I didn't necessarily see it at any of my other Dollar Trees. So I don't know if it was still left over from last year or what, but you could use whatever candle you have. A pillar would be really nice for this size candle holder. And this has like a really cool like spiral pattern on the outside, if you remember it from last year. And you can't really see it because it's like white on white, right? So I'm going to paint mine just a little distressing with some light blue acrylic and a sponge to bring out that cool print. It's kind of like a little bit like an ammonite, like a little ancient sea creature kind of design on there. It's pretty cool. And I think this will make it kind of pop on that beautiful candle holder that we just made for it. So I just kind of dragged that over with a sponge, wiping off any excess paint. I don't want it to um, be like super painted. I just kind of want it to be like distressed with the blue bringing out that beautiful pattern on the candle. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and peel the paper off the bottom and put it on there. And I do think it looks like seaweed. I think it looks pretty cool, but I thought maybe I could add a little bit more seaweed to it to uh, um, take up the little seaweed feel of it. So it's got like two leaves going up. And this is some of the Shore Living Greenery they have this year. This one piece here really looks kind of like coral, like seaweed. So I'm just going to um, cut off a piece of that 
and attach that to the base of the candlestick too to really make it look cool. So just trying to make sure I get it the right size. I'm just going to hot glue that in place. It is pretty lightweight, so I think it will stay. And I'm just going to hot glue it to the base like that. So it kind of goes up in the front of the candlestick with those other leaves behind it. it. Looks really coastal and cool. So just a dot of hot glue will secure that there. And that's basically all there is to it. This DIY was really fun to do. A little challenging with the metal, but we were able to get it to work. And this is how it turned out. So you can see that cool design on the candle. That sh like shell shape works really well for the base of the candle holder. I think it will catch any wax if I burn it. And the seaweed looks cool too. And I really love that color. I think it's really beautiful and a beachy bluish green color. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, next DIY, they have this new Shore Living fabric this year with sea turtles all over it. They also have fusible interfacing at Dollar Tree now, which is a new product. And I thought, you know what? My Cricut will cut fabric, but will only cut bonded fabric. So we're gonna give it a go using a couple pieces of that turtle fabric and make a fun DIY for my house. So what I wanna do is make the shape as big as I can um, with my Cricut 12 by 12 is basically what I'm gonna be limited to. And I don't have a fabric mat, so I'm gonna use my strong grip mat and hope for the best. <laughs> So I'm just gonna cut the sea turtle fabric down into that like 12 by 12 size. What I wanna do is make a really cute coastal pillow for my house, a no-so no -so version. And um, I thought we can make a really fun little applique out of this sea turtle fabric. And so I'm gonna need both packages of this to kind of get the size that I want. So I'm gonna use my first 12 by 12 square as a template to cut down my second. And then I am going to put the interfacing on the back and see if my Cricut can cut it out. It is an experiment and I've never done it before so I was a little intimidated but I'm gonna take you through all of the steps. The first thing I'm gonna do is just iron the little squares since they're rolled up and bended and stuff like that to make it a little bit easier to work with and make the final product a little better. This is the interfacing. It's not like a paper backed one where you peel the paper off the back, which confused me um, a little bit. <laughs> but what you're gonna do is just cut it down to size. So what I'm gonna do is use that for reference. I have it doubled up there. So I'm cutting out two pieces, one for each one. And then um, I'm going to iron that on. It's said on the package to um, put the rough side down against the underside of your fabric. So I have my fabric upside down and I put the rough side down and I'm gonna lay that on top. I wasn't sure um, if that would melt onto my pressing mat. So I did give it a quick trim to try to cut off any overlapping material. And uh, then I'm just gonna use my Cricut Easy Press. You could always use an iron. It said to use an iron on high, which I looked up and they said that was about 300 degrees. So I'm just gonna set my Cricut Easy Press to 300 degrees. And it said 10 to 15 seconds. I wanna make sure that it is definitely attached. So I did mine for 15 seconds. And um, it says just to do one section at a time and then overlap. So. I'm gonna have to do it in like four presses for my size of Cricut Easy Press here. Just moving that around and pressing it. And it seemed to adhere to the fabric really well. So fingers crossed this, this is gonna work. <laughs> this was me like making sure there's no paper on there and it makes your fabric nice and stiff. Makes it really easy to craft with. I think this could have lots of uses. When I was at Dollar Tree, um, today, I picked up more of that because I could see a use for that definitely in um, DIYs, especially when you're crafting with fabric. So we're gonna do the same thing here with our second piece, rough side down, 300 degrees for 15 seconds, and I'm gonna do that for each section. 
Now I was reading whether you could just use so I have a Cricut Explore Air 2 and it has a fine cut blade and what I found online was that would work um, but you probably want to use like a separate one for that. So I'm going to use my strong grip mat and put my fabric on there, um, interface down to cut it out. And um, the Cricut Explore Air 2 has a setting for bonded fabric. And so that's what we're going to use to try to cut this out. Now, I had never changed the blade in my Cricut, and I've had this for years. And so it cuts, but it could have cut better. And I think if I would have had a newer blade, which um, I'm going to now for sure, it would have cut better. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna start peeling it up carefully here. I just wanna peel the background off. What I did was cut it out in the shape of a sea turtle. I used just a ready-made silhouette of a sea turtle that was on Cricut. I'll be sure to include a link to that below. Nothing crazy, I just tried to find the simplest sea turtle cutout I could find um, to cut this out. And as you can see, it cut. The only areas I had trouble with were like um, in the corners around the flippers and stuff like that. It didn't cut 100%, but it cut about 99%, enough that I was pretty happy with it. It didn't fray too bad or anything. So I'm gonna carefully um, remove this from the mat, trying to not mess up the interfacing that was on there and trim up any loose threads that I might see because I wanna attach this turtle to my pillow. And I wanna do front and back of a pillow, so that is why we're doing two. So I'm gonna do the same thing here with our second set of fabric that we put the interfacing on. I'm gonna take this to my Cricut and cut it. I don't know if I could have changed the settings to make it cut better. Um, or cause I, the, you can't really do like the depth of cutting when you have it set to bonded fabric, but I tried sharpening mine with a little aluminum foil and actually I think it worked better before I did that. So that trick might not work too well <laughs> cause this one was cut a little bit worse, but we're still going to make it work. Really, um, I just kept pulling it up. If I found an area where it was still attached, I just trimmed like that little piece. It was still easier than cutting this out for sure. So I just ordered a new um, cutting blade for my Cricut. I'll have to try this again. I'm sure it does dull the blade though. So they, the recommendations to have a separate blade for fabric. So I think it worked. I think it was a success. They turned out pretty good. And I thought that the sea turtle shape would be really cute on the sea turtle fabric and I can just attach this to a plain pillow and make it look a lot better. So again, just trimming it up. The pillow that I picked up was super cheap. It was just like a $5 pillow at Dollar General. Dollar Tree Plus probably has something similar too. And I'm gonna use a special Mod Podge called Fabric Mod Podge on this. I actually picked this up on Amazon. I think I have it in my Amazon shop below. But it's supposed to be used for fabric and it's supposed to be permanent, like you can even like wash it. It's gonna stay on. So that's what we're gonna try to do with this sea turtle. Now it's like a really thick Mod Podge, as you can see, it's almost like a paste. So what I'm gonna do is spread that all over the bottom of my sea turtle and get that ready to apply to my pillow. I'm trying to get it as even um, a coverage as I can because I want to make sure every area of the fabric is stuck to the pillow. So I just do a nice healthy coat all the way around. And I want to take that and put that on the pillow. The pillow is just like an ivory color. So it kind of goes with anything, but you could do this on any color pillow and make the pillow look so much better. I'm going to do mine at an angle like it's swimming up diagonally across the pillow like that. So I get it where I want it and I just smooth it down. I did notice, you know, since it's not a flat surface um, that I'm attaching it to, it's already got the stuffing in there and stuff like that, that it, I felt like it was kind of pulling away on the edges a little bit and it could have more Mod Podge there. 
So what I did was just use a little paintbrush and some Mod Podge and I went around and anywhere where there was like a little bit of gap between the sea turtle and the fabric, I just touched it up, made sure that I had really good coverage. So definitely focus on your edges for this because you're not going to want it to peel up. It's kind of a two-step process according to the bottle of the Fabric Mod Podge. It says to put it on like this and then it says to let it sit for two hours and then um, seal it on top. So that's what we're going to do. I got one side all on. Everything's glued down really well. We're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to have it like kind of swimming up just like we did that one. So again, I'm just going to coat it with the Fabric Mod Podge here on the back, trying to get as much on there as I can. I was a little worried um, about doing the next coat because it said to do a thin coat on top, and it's so thick, this Fabric Mod Podge, but I'll show you um, how I actually got that to work pretty well. So um, that looks good. It is covered with the Mod Podge. And then we can lay that on the pillow and glue this one on as well. I'm going to do it the same direction, kind of make it a mirror image of the other side of the pillow and make sure it's all flat and adhered to the pillow. And I still, even though I really kind of went heavy with that Mod Podge, I still felt like I needed to do the edges. So again, just with a smaller paintbrush, I go around and touch up all the edges making sure everything is glued down. And then a little bit of patience is in order because it says to let it sit and dry for two hours. And so I'm going to do that. Um, I actually did that while I um, ran some errands. So it kind of worked out pretty well. And um, it dried pretty good. There were a few areas where I thought maybe it could have been a little bit closer that I was worried about peeling, but the sealing coat really um, took away my worries. It made it so much better and it looks very much permanent now. So I've let it dry for two hours and this was my trick. I got this little Mod Podge brush on Amazon. I really liked it. I'll be sure to include that in my Amazon shop. And it's a special brush for Mod Podge to get even strokes. So I thought it'd be great for trying to get even coat of this on it. And it went on so much better. You can see it goes on thinly with that brush and it's really easy to hold in your hands. I actually really liked it. And so I just go over the entire turtle that we cut out and go over it with that thin coat. And then I go in and um, give it a quick dry with my heat gun just so I can flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Just again, making sure that there is no gaps. I don't want any peeling and I want this to stay on there forever. <laughs> so we will see how it holds up. This is the first time. Well, I think I've used this once before on my channel, but I haven't really used it in an application like this, the Fabric Mod Podge. I did have trouble finding it. I couldn't find it in any stores that I shop at. So I did have to get that on Amazon, but it's a pretty cool product and I love Mod Podge of any kind. <laughs> I always try to get whatever I can and it, cause it's so easy to craft with. So again, on the back, I just did a thin coat of the Mod Podge all the way around and that's all there is to it. We have a really cute little sea turtle pillow. I absolutely love how it turned out. Just so colorful on that white pillow and it just made it look so coastal and fun. And the fact that it is made out of the sea turtle fabric, I think that's really cute. The shape is really adorable. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about the private Facebook group. I always have it linked below. You can share what you've been working on. I know a lot of you guys always want to share your DIYs with me. That's a great way to do it. I also have a Facebook page, an Instagram, a TikTok, and a Pinterest. And my handle on everything is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to try to use one of the new word decor pieces for the Shore Living line this year. They have several different ones. My little sea turtle has a boo-boo, but that's okay. I think I can probably fix him. 
I'm not actually going to use them for this project. I just want the letters. It's going to spell out the word ocean. I was a little curious how they had the O and the A outlined, but not the other letters. So that was kind of odd. It comes with string, um, double-sided tape, and of course the little sea creatures. Um, but I'm just going to use the letters. I'm going to combine those with one of these long, plain wood signs from the Dollar Tree. The only thing is it's a little too thin for what I need it to be, so I'm going to use two of them. Double it up to my, make a nice thick sign, and then just use a long board sign from the Dollar Tree. doesn't matter which one. I had a leftover Day of the Dead one, I think, from last year, but I like the fact that it had blue sides, and so I actually think that I picked those up on clearance. Now, let's go ahead and prepare the letters first. Again, I wasn't a big fan of the fact that the O and the A are outlined and the rest of them aren't. <laughs> so I'm going to try to fix that by adding outlines to the C, E, and N with just a fine-tipped Sharpie. It's a little intimidating, and the wood kind of soaked in my Sharpie a little bit. But this is just going to be kind of a background effect because... We are going to paint these and I think that this will still kind of um, shine through the paint and be a little bit of an outline and just to make it make sense. Like the O you could have always flipped over and not had the outlining but the A kind of needs the outlining because it has like that center part of the A. So I just sketched them out and they look a lot more uniform now. And since it says the word ocean, I want to paint them to look like the ocean. So I'm going to flip them over, line them up on the bottom, and then I'm just going to tape all the letters together with just some painter's tape just to make it easier to paint these. I'm going to paint them all together as one. So once I get them taped, I'm going to flip that over, and then I'm just going to start looking for my blues. I wanted like a blue for the sky and a couple shades of blue for the ocean. I'm using Caribbean um, by Apple Barrel, Caribbean Blue by Delta, and I think it's Blue Cotton by Apple Barrel. And I'm gonna mix them together too. You just need different shades of blue to do the ocean and it's so easy to do. So I started the sky with this light blue that kind of reminds me of the sky. And as you can see, I'm just using one of those chunky brushes from the Dollar Tree and I drag it all the way across. Then I switch to the more like teal color for your horizon line. Switch to the lighter blues to do like ocean. And you want like different shades of blue as you're looking out at the ocean. So I kind of mixed a couple of my blues together and finished off the bottom of that. You really can't mess this up and you can always add to it um, and fix any mistakes that you might make. But since it's an abstract ocean scene, it's really hard to mess up. I gave it a quick dry and then tried to fix my horizon line a little bit. It was a little off. And then add like a little bit variations in blue on the top of the ocean to give it a little bit of depth effect. And I always like to add a little bit of white too, like for little white caps or waves out in the ocean. Just a very light dry brush of like a little wave here and there. Again, just to give it a little bit of dimension and make it look like the ocean. So I do that across all of them. If you get a little bit too much on there, I accidentally put some in my sky. <laughs> you can clean it up with a baby wipe. So that looks pretty good. I don't want to do like the beach part. I just want to do the ocean because that is what the letters say. So I'm going to go ahead and peel these all off. And we're going to make a really cute ocean like standing sign for decor using those other signs I got from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to kind of clean up the edges of these for any paint that might have bled over. Um, so I have nice clean letter shapes. And I'm so excited to use these. I also have one that says beach and one that says welcome, I believe, in those. They're so cute. And they're brand new this year with Shore Living at Dollar Tree. Now to cover this sign, I have a scrap piece of Dollar Tree burlap that I want to cover it with. So I need to cut it down to size. Um, I'm going to pull a strand where I need to cut it. It'll provide a clean little path there in the burlap. For me to cut and get a nice straight line, 
for the bottom part of my sign. And then just using um, the sign as reference, I can cut it down even more. Just kind of even it up the top a little bit there. Um, I had this leftover from a, another Shore Living DIY, I believe. And I want to give it a quick iron too, just to make it a little bit easier to work with. And so I get my mat out. I also want to make sure that I got it cut to size. It looks like I can trim it up a little bit. And I just kind of peel the strings and trim it until it is perfect. And again, I'm only pressing it just to make it look better, make it easier to glue down. So just a quick iron over it. I've also like starched this before if you do need a little bit um, to be able to work with it and cut it more. But I think that this will be fine. I don't think we'll have to worry about any fraying or anything like that besides that little piece that wanted to come off for me. Now I want to double up this sign to make it thick enough so that we can make a standing sign out of it. And these Dollar Tree signs are a little thin. So I'm just going to put hot glue here on the back sign. Kind of all over and set my new sign on top. That we're going to cover with the burlap. And it just gave me a really nice thick flat sign. The holes in it aren't too large. I just sanded mine, put a little bit of sawdust inside of them to try to um, fill those up, but I don't think that they'll be too noticeable with the burlap on them. To attach the burlap, we're just using regular Mod Podge, a nice thick coat all over the sign. And I thought the burlap would be a really cute background for those ocean letters painted like the ocean. So once I have that on there, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay the burlap right on top and glue it down. It went on really well and I think I have it sized pretty well. I'm just gonna trim off any excess that might be sticking out and I want the bottom to be um, pretty cleaned up so that it won't like um, stick out from when I attach it to the base of the sign. But that looks pretty good so we can start with the letters. They fit perfectly on this size sign. I'm not sure if they would fit on the frame Dollar Tree sign. I think this sign might be a little bit bigger, but you could always use whatever you could find. I'm going to start with the center letter to try to center it, but since it's kind of a snug fit, it's pretty easy to hot glue these all on and get pretty good spacing. I just want to make sure that I don't overlap the bottom again since I am going to have a base on this sign and try to keep all of my letters fairly even spaced. For the A there, there, the only thing that was bothering me about the A is that that center part of the A is not cut out. And I do end up fixing that here in just a little bit and I'll show you what I ended up doing with that and I think it worked out pretty good. Now for the burlap that doesn't have anything on it, I thought we could put some little sea creatures on it. So I get these little teeny tiny um, starfish from Amazon. Um, I have these linked in my Amazon shop. They're so cute. And then I like to use the little tiny starfish that come in the bottles at Dollar Tree. I know a lot of you guys have been hunting for those. I've been hunting for them too. Um, I don't know where they are right now, <laughs> but I love those things and I always buy them. So I hope they get them back in stock soon. My um, stores, I went to two Dollar Trees today and they both just got like new sea glass in. So hopefully soon, but I'm just scattering little tiny seashells and little tiny starfish all over and kind of making the burlap kind of represent the sand part of the sign, right? So I like that. I think that looks pretty good. I'm even going to put one here in the middle of the O. Why not? And you know, they cut out the middle of the O. They could have cut out the middle of the A. I don't know why they didn't. <laughs> And the starfish are uh, real starfish, so they are a little fragile, so be careful with those. You don't want to push on those too hard for sure. But I think that looks pretty cute, and it provided another little beachy touch to this sign. Now for the base, I'm just going to flip it over and use the back of it for the top of my sign. All I have to do is get rid of these pesky stickers. Heat gun, the heat gun works really well for this and a little putty knife from the Dollar Tree to get that all scraped off. I like the fact that they had blue sides all the way around. So that part's already kind of done for me. 
and I'm going to distress the top of it to look like driftwood. But what I'm going to do first is glue the ocean sign on first because I don't want to glue to the paint. I want to glue to the actual sign if I can. And I thought that that would make it a little bit sturdier because I'm going to have like the ocean sign standing on top of that base. So to attach it, I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue along the base of those two signs that we put together. And glue this down right kind of in the middle, maybe a little bit more towards the front. Just standing straight up. And those signs, those long signs, board signs like that from the Dollar Tree are very heavy duty. They work great for a base. And I really didn't like the fact that the A didn't have an opening. So I used a little scrap piece of that burlap that we used on the back and cut out a little um, tiny triangle that we're just gonna Mod Podge on. And I'm glad I did it because it makes it make more sense. Um, having the burlap and it just adds a little bit more texture to the letters as well. So super cute. I just put that where that cutout would be and glue that down. I was a little worried that it would fray on me, but I coated it with Mod Podge pretty well. So it all stayed together. Now for the base part, it's that unfinished wood, right? I'm going to use this color. Um, I think it's called Beachcombers Beige from Apple Barrel. And I'm just distressing. I'm leaving some of that original darker color to show through to kind of give it that driftwood vibe. I also distressed the blue a little bit to kind of make it all to go together. And it's all going to look very coastal farmhouse. I went ahead and did the back too, even though you're not really going to be able to see back there, but why not? I'm not going to do anything on the back of the wood sign though. I'm just going to leave that plain wood. But this is how it turned out, our little ocean sign. So... A really fun DIY to use these new ocean and like beach letters with. I'm really excited that they added these to the Shore Living line this year. Um, letters like this can be really expensive. So to get all of these plus like the little sea creatures too for $1.25 is a really good deal. And whenever I'm at a craft store and try to get the letters, they never have the letters that I need for the word I want to make. Now, the next DIY, we're going to use one of the new Shore Living signs. This is the welcome sign, and I thought this would be perfect for a coastal wreath, right? So I'm going to do a very simple wreath. It's one of my favorite ways to do a wreath. I'm going to start with a large wreath form from the Dollar Tree. This is the big one. This is 18 inches, really great size for your front door. And I'm just going to do a simple burlap wreath with where they're rolled burlap from Dollar Tree. This is my favorite way to do a coastal wreath because it's so easy. I really like the look of weaving the Dollar Tree rope in and out and in and out. But it takes a lot of rope and it takes a lot of time. So I'm going to show you how easy it is just to do a burlap wreath. As you can see, I'm just going to glue it to the back and I am overlapping. I pull it tight because I don't want it to be frumpy or anything like that, but I just keep overlapping every piece. And the fact that I'm kind of overlapping all of it makes it nice and thick. You can not really see that dark wire through it um, that you would be worried about with burlap. It does a pretty good job of coverage. So this was a new roll of that burlap and it makes it mm, three quarters the way around. So I'm gonna make sure that my seam's on the back. So I just cut it down a little bit, grab a second roll of the burlap, and I'm just going to glue the two pieces of burlap together to continue that wrapping process. So that was really easy, just hot gluing those together. And I love this rolled burlap from the Dollar Tree. Whenever I see this, I grab a ton of it because it is so good for coastal crafting. And as you can see, it's just the perfect width for doing something like this. So I just keep wrapping and tightening until I get all the way around. Kind of overlap maybe once here at the end. And again, cut the seam here on the back and attach it with hot glue. And I'm going to think I'm going to make that like the top of the wreath to kind of make it make more sense. But looks pretty good so far. The burlap makes a great backdrop. And the welcome sign is plenty big to go from side to side. I was trying to decide if I wanted it to hang 
if I wanted to attach it, I decided to attach mine. So I just took the hanger off the back of the sign because I'm not going to need that. Now I want to use that. I also want to use some of the Shore Living Shapes. They have some of these cute little wooden sea turtles. And we can scatter some of those around. Um, the sign itself has little wood fish on it. And so I thought other coastal creatures would be cute too. These are the little clothespins that are the seahorses. So I thought I would grab some of those as well. Removing them from the clothespins proves to be a little tricky. <laughs> But that looks pretty good, so we can start painting this stuff now. The welcome sign is kind of cool, but I don't like the dark blue. That doesn't really go with my coastal vibes. So I'm going to just change the color of that part. This is the color Cloudless by Apple Barrel. It's my absolute favorite beachy color. It's a very light blue. And I'm just using a tiny little paintbrush from the Dollar Tree to make sure that I kind of stay where I want and not get too much paint on anything else, but you can always use a baby wipe to get it off if you notice your mistake soon enough. And I'm doing it on the C, on the M, and on the W. And it's just gonna change kind of the color scheme of the sign. And I'm glad that I did this because that's like more of my favorite color. I don't mind the other color of blue, but I just don't use this shade of blue very much with my coastal decor. It looks almost more nautical to me and I want it to be a little bit beachier. So again, just trying to avoid everything. The fish is just right out of the way, so that worked out well. But as you can see, since I'm doing such a light blue over a darker blue, it's gonna require a couple coats to get good coverage. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Just going over that a couple more times. It does kind of soak into the wood a little bit. So it goes on with a little bit better coverage than it ends up looking, but I just painted it, dried it, painted it, dried it, and then I also, I think I needed a third coat on that, and I also wanted to paint like at least one of the little fish on there blue as well um, to kind of match the sign a little bit better. I like the little ship wheel with like that teal color that's on it, so I'm going to do this little fishy blue and then just touch up the rest of these letters and I'm also going to be painting the little sea turtles and seahorses that we're going to add on it and I even add some starfish as well so these are the little sea turtles they're so cute I'm going to do them in that cloudless blue color too to kind of coordinate with the welcome sign that we just made that color so it doesn't take much paint on these for sure I'm just going to go over the top of all four of them and then I picked out three of the seahorses, um, the ones that were like the natural wood color to paint as well. Um, they're a little tricky to get off and um, make sure you have backup plans if you're planning on to using these. Because either they come off super easy like that, I didn't have to do anything to it, just popped right off, right? And then, or they break. So... When I do have success, I kind of take the clothespin apart like that and then use as much heat as I can to get the glue loose and try to pry that off. But you have to be so careful because the tail wants to break, the mouth wants to break. I don't know why they're so glued on so well. <laughs> if you couldn't see the clothespin on the tail of the seahorse, I would have honestly just left them on there. I was able to get the second one, but the third one totally broke on me. Um, so I thought I needed a few more sea creatures. And so I decided to add some of the starfish that are the clothespins as well. Uh, they are a little bit easier to separate and I had a little bit more luck with them. So we've already painted the sea turtles blue. So I thought we would paint the rest of them white. So you can see how easy the little starfish ones want to come apart for me. Pliers work great for peeling the little clothespin off the back. And so I'm going to paint the two seahorses that survived and two of the starfish white. Uh, the, star, the seahorse is painted really well. I did notice painting the starfish, the little open dots on there. 
um, block really easily with the paint. So what I did was just go over mine with a um, toothpick to kind of open those up a little bit. But I just wanted blue and white, like the blue fish and the white fish that we already have on the welcome sign. Something that's going to kind of contrast against the burlap that we use to wrap the wreath with because we're going to decorate all around with the fun little sea creatures. And I've got another fun coastal DIY as well to kind of tie it all together. Now, while I still have the white paint, though, I'm going to do a little light dry brush with that over like the blues and stuff that I painted on here. Um, just to kind of give it that coastal farmhouse vibe. I really like that. And if you get too much on, you can always wipe it off with a baby wipe. So that's what we're going to do. Anything that has like color on there, just distressing that with a little bit of white. And since I'm distressing those, I'm going to go ahead and distress the little blue sea turtles as well to kind of make it that same, that same vibe. Now let's start putting this together. The first thing I'm going to do is attach the welcome sign. I kind of looked on the W and the E to see where I needed to put my glue. Added hot glue to those and I'm just going to glue that directly to the burlap. Um, making sure that is good and attached. I want to use this wreath on my front door and I think it's going to be so beachy and fun. Now, once I have that on there, I want to um, add the sea creatures. I am going to add like a fishing net material as well. I'm just going to go ahead and alternate colors, kind of lay these out to see how many I want to do on the top and how many I want to do on the bottom. And it's kind of hard to get these all in one shot, but I ended up doing three on the top and five on the bottom. And this is what we're using for a fishing net. This is that mesh ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a couple different colors. This is the ivory color. I thought that would look really cute against the burlap and make it look like a fishing net wrapped around. Um, just to make it a little less plain with just the burlap wreath. So I start here on the side and just glue that to start with. And I wanted to do this after I added the welcome sign because I'm actually going to wrap the netting around that sign as well to give it that cool vibe. I don't want it too tight, but I don't really want it like gaping out. So I'm going to wrap it around just like some of the letters there, like part of the E. And then using that same roll, just keep kind of alternating that around. So you still see a lot of burlap, but you see a lot of this too, which really does kind of look like fishing net. And so I think it's just a really easy way to get that look um, with like a smaller pattern netting. I, I like to use market pantry bags for a small kind of fishing net too. And I've been picking some of those up recently at the Target dollar spot. So that's another option you could use. And then we can start laying out where we're going to put all the sea creatures. And you can see that, that really just added a little pizzazz to the wreath. I like it. And I'm just going to start hot gluing everything on. Easy peasy. I just hot glue um, on the back of the wood shape and lay it on, sometimes overlapping the netting. Just trying to keep everything spaced out a little bit. And I really love all the little sea creatures all the way around. If you don't have any of the sea creatures, you could also do like seashells as well. But I think this turned out so cute. And I think it coordinates really well with that new welcome sign from the Dollar Tree. I think it's so cute. This is the final result of the little welcome wreath. The word is perfect for the front door. Lots of little coastal touches on there. And I'm glad I changed the color up on the sign. It uh, is much more me <laughs> in that light blue color, but I think it turned out really nice. What do you guys think about this DIY? Hey guys, have you visited my new website yet? Craftybeach.net, brand new website I've launched here for my channel. When you visit, what you're going to find is a blog. Every entry is a different DIY video from me. So if you click on the video, what you're going to find is a photo of each one of the DIYs that we made in that video that, that you can then pin on Pinterest so you can remember to make it. If you scroll down, you can find the instructional video from me to figure out exactly how to make it. I'm going to have everything kind of organized by season. Right now, I just kind of have Easter, Spring, Coastal. 
I also have a link to my Amazon shop with all the items I recommend on Amazon and even a link to my Etsy store for all my fun crafting meme and watercolor printables for you. So there it is, craftybeach.net. Be sure to check it out. Brand new website, trying to get this up and going and I'm really excited about it. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to see if I could take some of the bamboo rings, a planter from the Dollar Tree, and make a fun little coastal planter DIY. So I picked up this navy color. I thought this would look really nice with some of this new coral fabric. This is from the Short Living line as well. And it's more of a royal blue with like light blue coral on it. So I thought we could kind of make this correspond. So I popped the bottom of it off because um, I'm only going to do the top part of it. But what I want to do is do a fabric covered pot. And then I also want to see if we can make a fun Dollar Tree DIY plant stands with those bamboo rings. So I picked up this pot because I thought it would fit nicely in the smaller ring of the bamboo rings. And I just wrap that fabric around. It looks like it's going to be plenty big enough to go all the way around. So what I'm going to do is just wrap it tight since it's kind of an odd shape, right? And just start cutting it off um, where I'll have excess fabric on the top and the bottom. And then I can always trim it down to size. I thought this would be the best way because, you know, the bottom of the pot is skinnier than the top of the pot. So it's definitely going to be a little bit of a weird shape here to keep it tight against the pot. So that looks pretty good. And to attach it, we're just going to use a Mod Podge. So I just start with like one section at a time and we're going to cover it with Mod Podge and start attaching the fabric, wrapping it all the way around. Uh, I wasn't sure how it would work on this like line textured plastic pot, but it actually um, worked pretty well. It was pretty easy to do. So I'm just going to do like the center section here, nice coat and lay that down kind of like in the center part of the fabric that we cut down to size. And then we can just keep adding glue and wrapping the fabric around. So once I have that in place, I did this side of it, wrapped the fabric tight and made sure I had enough Mod Podge down to do like the entire piece. And then we can wrap that around and slightly overlap that to finish it off. I do want like my cut for the back of my pot to be kind of straight. So trying to cut that at like a little bit of a straighter angle there. Um, so it kind of makes sense for like a single line seam there on the back. And then I'm just gonna use more Mod Podge to glue the fabric to itself slightly overlapping right here in the back. Just making sure there's no bubbles, everything's laying down smooth. It went on super easy. And then I'm just going to cut along the top part of the pot any of the excess fabric off. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I do have an idea to kind of cover up my loose seams on this um, to make sure I don't have any like odd cuts or fraying or anything like that. So I get it cut as close to the plastic as I can all the way around the top part of the pot. On the bottom, I was wondering if I could like leave it and fold it down inside, but I ended up just going ahead and cutting it off like I did with the top. A little trickier to get in there, but again, just trying to cut it as close to the pot as I can. I wanna be able to pop back on the bottom part of the pot. Um, and since the colors match together, I think it'll still match well that like navy color with this beautiful coral fabric. I wasn't sure about this DIY. I was kind of winging it on the plant stand and stuff like that, but I actually really love how it turned out. Pretty cute. So again, I just pop the bottom back on, trying to make sure I don't have any strings, any crazy fraying on that, and that it's all glued down really well. Let's just go ahead and remove the sticker here from the bottom of it. I was trying to decide if I was going to make it like a hanging plant stand or a standing one. I ended up doing a standing one um, to just to kind of raise it up and make a little plant stand for this pot. Really fun to do. And I want to trim it out with some burlap. 
So this is the burlap trim from the Dollar Tree. I thought this would be perfect for that top seam. And I'm gonna kind of um, hot glue it on there with a tiny bit of an overlap over the top to kind of give, this is like kind of a curvier one. They come in these like multi-packs of like different um, shapes and sizes, but I really like them because I the burlap really looks really great with all kind of coastal crafting. So I just go all the way around and I just have my seam be right there with the fabric seam on the back. Now for the bottom part, I'm gonna switch it up to a different design, a little bit smaller, same package, um, and do like the zigzag burlap trim just to do the seam along the bottom. And I don't really want it to interfere with that bottom section. I just want, kind of want it to make the seam look better here. So again, I start on that seam there on the back and just hot glue that trim all the way around. It's just gonna finish everything off. No, no unraveling or crazy cuts or anything like that exposed. Just makes it look a little bit more professional and finished. I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm not gonna do a real plant on this. I'm actually gonna DIY like a faux plant because your girl does not have a green thumb. I think it's the fact that my house doesn't have great windows. It's an older home and uh, my last house here in Florida had great windows for plants. This one just does it. And so I keep most of my plants outside, but I wanted to do a cute little planter for inside. So these are the bamboo rings I'm gonna use to make the stand. They come in a two pack with a larger and a smaller one. I end up using the two smaller ring pieces. As you can see, that fits really well for that size pot. It goes about half the way up. And so I'm gonna kind of DIY one. So these are little bamboo sticks that I actually got on Amazon. They should be linked in my Amazon shop, but you could also use the wood dowels from Dollar Tree. I like these just because they're flat. And I'm just gonna use my miter scissors to simply cut these down to size. I'm gonna need three pieces all about the same size. And I just kind of estimated um, how big I wanted it to be. And that's gonna be my side pieces to hold the planter up. Since I'm doing a um, DIY, like not a real plant, it's not gonna be super heavy. So I think that the stand will be definitely sturdy enough. I just do a bead of hot glue there on the bamboo stick Stick it on the bamboo ring from the Dollar Tree, just like that. And I'm gonna do like one every third of the way around. So if I turn that around, I can kind of see where I need to space out the other two. That way it's not too busy. I think that's gonna be plenty of structure on this little plant stand. So again, just a little dot of hot glue on the bottom, gluing that bamboo to that. And I, these work really well together. I've made like a coastal toilet paper holder for one of my coastal bathrooms using these bamboo sticks, the full length. And it turned out great. Um, I've done it a couple of years ago and it is still working well. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here on the top. I do a bead of hot glue on the inside of each one of them. I'm gonna flip it over that way I can kind of use my work desk as leverage there to glue that on to the other wooden ring. So just a really simple little plant stand, but I thought it was a fun little DIY to do. And the bamboo always looks nice and coastal. So now that that's complete, I'm gonna leave it as is. I love the bamboo color of that wood. And we can start DIYing our little faux plant. And I'll show you exactly how I did that. I just popped in a couple of the little foam blocks from the Dollar Tree. And this is the greenery that I found at Dollar Tree today. I think it's so pretty. It looks like a tiny like um, Monstera like leaf, a really cute little pattern. And I just cut individual leaves for the first couple rounds to make it lower and not too tall. And I'm just gonna kind of go around the edges, just kind of like pushing those down between the different foam pieces all the way around. And I don't really want you to be able to see inside the pot, but I am gonna kind of cover that foam and stuff in case you can see in there a little bit. Wanted to see how much coverage. These are kind of a plasticky leaf. 
Um, but they did still kind of iron pretty well with my heat gun when they were going um, bent or anything like that. So one package kind of went all the way around the edges. I'm going to go in with some floral moss while I can still kind of get to the foam. This is the Dollar Tree brown floral moss. And it, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to put a little on top of the foam, a little on the top on the sides. Um, nothing crazy. I just want um, none of the foam to be visible and it to look like it has like almost like a soil color there as the base. I'm going to cut apart the second bunch too. I'm going to use a total of three bunches of these to make a nice size plant to look like a really beautiful little house plant that I don't have to take care of. <laughs> so as you can see, it's filling out really nicely. Since I cut those all down to size, all of those leaves are like a nice shorter. And I'm going to leave the last bundle together. It is too tall though. So I'm going to try to shorten that the best that I can. For some reason, the wires in these were like super strong here at the base. So I tried with my pliers um, to kind of break those off and I didn't have a lot of luck. So I actually just kind of bent them up um, the wires because I couldn't get them to cut. But that's OK. And I just put the middle section down that provided a nice height for the little house plant and just kind of arrange it a little bit. Actually turned out pretty cute. Looks like a little faux house plant. And I don't know if the plant stand would be strong enough if you filled it up with potting soil. I guess you could always try it. Or you could just DIY the pot like I did with the really fun coastal fabrics from the Shore Living line. This is how mine turned out. I think it turned out pretty cute. My little fake plant. I love that coral print. I think that's so beautiful. Lots of blues and it coordinates nice with that navy pot. And my little DIY plant stand that I tried to invent. <laughs> that actually worked out pretty well. Just another fun creative way to use some shore living items for some home decor. Okay, the next DIY, we're gonna try to DIY one of the brand new seahorse signs from the Dollar Tree. And it has like a like exoskeleton kind of structure on top. I'm going to use that sign and a long framed sign from the Dollar Tree that was horizontal, but I just removed the hanger on the back to make it a vertical sign. Now I have a fun idea for what to fill all the different parts of the seahorse with, but I want the top part of the seahorse to be blue, a beachy blue. So I'm using that cloudless color by Apple Barrel again. And I'm just using one of those little uh, sponge dauber, uh, like stencil sponges from the Dollar Tree. Because um, I don't want to do too much painting. I just want to do the top part. I also don't want any like paint pooled up anywhere. So just trying to clean that up as I go with a smaller paintbrush. But it's just the raw wood, really easy to paint. One coat is definitely enough on that to get good coverage. Now my idea for what to fill the different sections of the seahorse with on this one is sand. I thought I could kind of do a two-toned seahorse, like a blue and white seahorse. So I'm going to use some of the white sand from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to put down something because it can get a little messy. And to glue it on, I like to use just plain school glue. I always get this on clearance back to school season for like 20 cent, 29 cents at Target. And I am just going to fill all the different sections with glue and then put the sand inside. So there's like this little like earish section here, the eye as well. Just kind of spreading out the glue flat so that I can add the sand to it. And I haven't been able to find the tan sand at my Dollar Trees lately. I tend to always have that problem this time of year when I really want it. I've been finding a ton of the white though, so might have to make do with some white. And then I'm going to do this section of the seahorse as well. Just kind of filling in each little section there with a little bit of glue, spreading it out so it's not too thick in any one area and that I get sand glued everywhere. And I'm just sprinkling the sand in trying not to get it to like attach to the blue part of the seahorse if I can. 
So I just kind of push it in with my finger, try to clean up what was on the blue parts. And then I'm going to do the same thing here for the back side of the seahorse. And I like this. It's fun, but it's a little bit more challenging than the flatter ones that they've had in recent years. But I do like the attention to detail, all the texture on there. I know I did a DIY last year. One of you guys wanted a more realistic one, and I tried to make this exoskeleton pattern out of hot glue. It actually turned out pretty good, though. And then these sections are a little small here on this fin, but we're going to commit to putting the white sand everywhere. So again, I just add a little school glue and push some white sand down in there as well. Now, whenever I do sand to a project, especially like a sign like this, that's going to hang on the wall, I always like to glue the sand from the bottom, but also glue it from the top. And if I need to add like a little bit more for like the areas that might have like a bald spot, I can do that without having to make a mess because the school glue part of it is kind of done. You're really going to need like a spray glue at this point. So that looks pretty good. The spray glue that I'm going to use is from the crafter section at Dollar Tree. It's this one, just a little aerosol spray glue. It can be a little tricky to find this sometimes. And I'm just going to kind of spray all over, gluing it from the top. I don't necessarily want the glue on the blue parts that I have there. So I'm just using a baby wipe, trying to clean that up a little bit. Because I want to make sure that I don't get sand stuck to those parts. I just kind of want to keep it inside. I also had another idea. I picked up several of these seahorse signs because they're so cute this year. And I'm also thinking about maybe making one of these with resin. One of you guys did it with one of the um, one of the nautical cutout signs, um, and you posted it on Facebook, and it turned out really cool. They did like different colors of resin for like the windows. So I was thinking that might work for the seahorse as well. Might have to try that out. I did get another case of Dollar Tree resin that we'll have to play around with. I forgot to fill the hole in the top of the seahorse, so I just went in there with a little bit of spackle. Um, just to kind of disguise that, put a little blue paint over that as well. I'm going to finish that up because I don't need to hang it because I'm going to actually attach it to that long wood sign from the Dollar Tree. Now, it has like a great coastal frame on it, but the wood on it was a little darker than I wanted. So again, I'm using that Beachcombers Beige from Apple Barrel. I picked that up. I think I actually got that one at Walmart. A lot of times I get Apple Barrel paint on Amazon though. I try to have a lot of shades linked in my Amazon shop because you can get them on Prime and it saves you a strip to the store and they're super inexpensive as well. So I'm distra distressing. I'm leaving a little bit of that dark wood shining through to kind of keep like the wood grain going through. But I just kind of want it to look like a rough driftwood color and that color is perfect for that. Now, since I um, have that dark wood in the background, I don't really need to distress it with anything else. Um, but I did go over it with a little bit more of the Beachcomber Beige just to brighten it up a little bit more. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, for the back, I need to make a new hanger because it was horizontal before. So I'm just going to do the same thing with some Dollar Tree twine and tie little knots. And it's got that thick frame on there, so I can use my staple gun and just staple that to the sides, making a cute little hanger here that you won't be able to see. And every time I do a video, you guys want to know where I got my twine holder. I got it at Dollar Tree. It is a yarn holder. They're new. And I picked up an extra one the other day. Maybe we'll have to have a giveaway soon and I can give it away to one of you guys. Now this is the seahorse. As you can see, it's a really nice size for the sign. It gives me a little bit of room on the top and bottom to add a bit more decor though. And so I was thinking about adding some of the short living greenery um, that kind of looks like, you know, seaweed, things that a little seahorse would um, be attached to to kind of decorate the bottom part of the sign. I thought that'd be a fun touch. I thought these little pieces here were perfect. They were on the pick that has the seahorse on them. So definitely fitting. 
I can have like some go behind the seahorse and some go in front. So the middle section I start with, I'm going to do behind and I'm just going to do a little bit of hot glue there at the bottom to glue that into place. And then the seahorse can go on top like that. So let's go ahead and attach it. It overlaps with the frame on its like um, snout, its tail, and its fin. So I put hot glue in those three areas and it kind of gives it a 3D effect where I can put like a little bit of greenery um, behind it and in front of it. It's going to provide a lot of fun textures here. And you can even have some go under and some go over, kind of like that. I'm just going to kind of make that work with hot glue and make it look like a little seaweed forest down here. A little bit smaller scale than the seahorse, but that's okay. I don't know why that piece doesn't really look like it belongs. I'm going to trim that off, and this piece looks really cool. So we're going to add that one on top as well. Now, since I'm hot gluing those all to the bottom, it does look a little rough down there with the bottom of those plastic like plants. So I want to kind of disguise that a little bit and add like a little decorative touch to it as well. So I'm going to use some of this thicker twine. This is the rolled twine that you get at Walmart. It's a little thicker than the Dollar Tree twine, and I thought that it was kind of necessary for this one. So again, I'm just going to use my staple gun right here on the frame. And I'm going to wrap that around like three times to kind of make it look wrapped, but it also disguises the bottom part of the plants there and makes it look a little bit more finished. And it definitely looks coastal. It looks like rope. And that looks really cool. So I'm going to do the same thing here on the front. Just stapling that to the frame and wrapping it around three times and finishing that off as well. I've already made the hanger for the back. So that's basically the last step in this little seahorse DIY. He turned out really cute. Whenever I can layer Dollar Tree signs like this, I like them a lot better. It just makes them look nice and thick. And with the frame on this one, it adds a lot of um, depth to it as well. But lots of fun touches with the driftwood colors, the blues, the white sand filling in the different sections of the seahorse. We have the little seaweed here at the bottom and some rope hiding the bottom of those. I think it turned out really cute. I had a lot of fun putting this one together. I hope you like this DIY. Okay, you've made it all the way to the final reveal. I'm going to review all of the DIYs we made today. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. Comment your favorite DIY in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. Enjoy.
Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of today's video. That always helps a lot. I also want to give a huge thank you to all of my Crafty Beach Bum members for supporting my channel here on YouTube. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R., Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C., and Lindsay. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to become a member, all you have to do is hit the join button under today's video. It's $4.99 a month. You can cancel any time. You're going to get early ad-free access to my videos. And if you'd like to check out more Dollar Tree DIYs, be sure to check out this video right here. Happy crafting!